Hello and welcome to my talk. You thought your React application is secure? Think again. My name is Durantel and I want to show you today a few gaps that you should know about when you do React coding. So, why are we here today? I know you're what you're thinking right now, like this is the year 2021. Is this going to be another talk about XSS? Like what do you want from me? What do you want from my life right now with XSS in React? Because I thought we got over it by now. Well, that's where I'm gonna say hello XSS, my old friend. And I'm gonna show you a couple of examples that I was just going over Twitter, you know, just to find some coding examples of people showcasing some of their like uh, code stuff on React. And what are they actually doing there? So here's one example, right? This is XSS, this is, you know, this year. Uh, what's going on, let's see. Uh, looks like someone is trying to build a counter, uh, but it's, uh, something's messy over there. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Because when I zoom in a bit inside, I see the whole fancy use effect kind of stuff. Is it is it fancy still? I don't know, it's already like a few versions into React. Uh, but anyway, you can see that there's a count variable that's coming maybe from the outside. We are putting it in. We have no idea what's in it. Is it sanitized? Is it not? Should we output and code it? What does it even mean to output and code things? We'll learn about it in a second. But as you're seeing, there's a mix here of React APIs and the DOM APIs like inner HTML, which is not a really secure way of doing things. And this mix actually causes cross-site scripting attacks or vulnerabilities like in this application. Let's look at another example. I've also seen this case on Twitter, which is you know also this year, uh, not so long ago. So this person was trying to avoid the uh, runtime evaluation ev eval uh, function by basically accepting user input as well and well running it right because when you're doing return a plus b and a is an i ife or a function or whatever well it's gonna get it's gonna get run it's gonna get ex uh, evaluated so that doesn't really solve the problem either so we're having a lot of those different things that if we're not using the right apis we're not aware of what are the secure apis or what are the insecure apis i'm not just talking about you know uh, uh, dangerously inner html things i'm f talking about other things as well and you'll see it in a second so Introducing myself, my name is Iran Tal. I'm a developer advocate at Sneak, where we help developers build applications securely using open source. So if you're in your IDE writing some JS6 code, writing some Node.js code, Java, whatever that is, we'll help you, we'll help you find it. We'll augment your experience of doing that by telling you real time if you are actually having some vulnerabilities and insecure code right there. Well, this is really cool, but I'm doing some other things as well, you know, GitHub star, uh, activist uh, on web security topics. So, you know, Node.js probably send me active there as well, doing all of those kind of things. But really, uh, if you just want to reach out and talk about any of this or something else on Twitter, we run underscore tal and reach out and say hi. So let's get on with this. React is mostly secure by default, right? Like other frameworks like Vue and Angular, most of this get things right on the client side, right? As far as it goes to XSS and maybe some other things when uh, some frameworks take, you know, a bit more, more bulky and take a step further as well. But why am I saying mostly secure, right? Like what is going on? Why is the one on this stage right now saying mostly secure? What is left for me to protect? Because I thought using React actually protects me from all of this weird XSS stuff happening to my applications. So, to realize that, we kind of like need to, you know, explore something else. I'm saying React is mostly secure by default, but what does secure by default mean? We need to explore this a little bit and you need to like understand a little bit more of the jargon and that's where I'm going to just level up and just say what XSS is. So everyone here can be on the same, uh, you know, level playing field. So when you write this code and render it to the DOM, the user input here, like first name, for example, what happens to it? In the general case where this is uh, insecure user input, it could lead to potential uh, um, well vulnerabilities like XSS on the on the web page. But with React, you're kind of safe. Now, why is that? And so let's see what happens when we actually put something in, like a, like a script alert thing or image source or whatever, into this uh, JSX uh, code snippet. Well, actually, if you look at the page, you get something like this, which looks like a script or whatever element I would have put there, but it's not. That is because if you look very carefully with your uh, you know, DevTools inspector thing into this uh, specific component, uh, specific element on the page, you would actually see that all of those angle brackets, they're not real angle brackets. They're actually HTML entities that encode and tell the page that it needs to render 
uh, it needs to render uh, uh, like the angle brackets to the left and to the right, but they're not real angle brackets. So that is why when you put that into the page and as, as, um, as user input, nothing would happen. No script would actually get evaluated, no runtime JavaScript evaluation, because this isn't actual real HTML uh, element or something around it. And the browser know this, and this is what I mean when I say React is mostly secure by default. React is mostly uh, uh, secure by default actually means that it knows to encode. So now we have this new jargon telling us what this actually is. This is secure by default if you actually do output encoding by default on any user input. So with that said, with this knowledge, you know, let's uh, move a little bit forward and figure out you know, if React is secure by default uh, and it does secure output of user input, why are you saying this is mostly secure by default? What is still left for me to protect and where are really all the gaps? So let's dive now in into some live coding together and see what we can learn about some pitfalls. And so for that, I have this um, build application website where it's, you know, this uh, Kate Libby was building uh, her package profile for open source maintainers and things like that. So it's kind of like the, uh, 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 well, a web page with packages on it. Uh, so let's let's dive into uh, something like this and see how it looks like. Well, I need my ID, there we go. Let's make sure everything works. It does, and if it does, I should have, nope, this one here. Okay, cool. So um, this is the website that I've just built and looks like it's, you know, working pretty cool. Has, uh, you know, some elements in it, like uh, user input here, <clears throat> sorry, like uh, their name. Um, description or something, link to their Twitter, uh, some more stuff that I can use like testimonials. So there's a lot of user input here that we can use as a baseline of uh, just simulating what could actually go wrong. So let's take a look at this a little bit more. For example, this database has all of the things that I was talking about over here. And this is what we're actually going to use to simulate what could actually uh, go wrong. So I'm gonna go and, and change some of them, for example, just uh, for the sake of things. So I can change this to uh, my name here, and once I do it, um, you see it auto uh, loads to Lirant all over here. That's fine, but what happens if I change it to something like image source x on error um, alert one, and hopefully that triggers an XSS? It doesn't. This is where React actually uh, helps you and secures things by default. Actually output and codes, this is what we said with the example of the first name. This is why if you try those things and they didn't actually execute, that's fine. That's because, uh, that's fine database um, author name over here is simply something that React knows to now apply output encoding and change all of this into HTML entities. So, so far so good. Let's bring this back to Kate Lady. Um, and let's change something else. This, let's, let's, try, let's try a link, okay? Let's try a link, which is not just a, just a, a bit of text. Let's try and change this to, um, well, this is over here. So this is if I, uh, there we go. If I just hover it, you could see at the browser uh, bottom left, this is going to her Twitter account. So I'm gonna change this to, let's try and be, be kind of malicious here, right? Let's, let's, let's say someone has this free form field <clears throat> and they just build up JavaScript alert, which is like, again, the classic way of maybe introducing some XSS. So if I do this, let the page reload, I'm assuming it does, is where you need to like go here and maybe click on it and we see now an XSS, but why, why is going on? This is actually pretty weird, like why do I have an XSS, an alert, if I'm actually using React? This is pretty newish version of React as well. Okay, this, you know, 17 and above. So what is, what is going on here? Now to understand what is going under, Let's go back here, the Twitter link. The database of Twitter link actually gets inserted here. And so what we now understand is, well, React does not apply output encoding and protects you from href values like HTML attributes that go here. And that is something that you should be aware of. So let's try to fix it. If First of all, now you are aware of it and you know that if something is malicious or we need to uh, fix it, but let's see. There are some pitfalls in how we try to fix those things. So let's look at that as well. I'm gonna go here and, um, I mean, we can, we can leave it at that. And just before, play around here a bit, we have enough room. 
And so let's go ahead and try uh, this whole uh, user factory, just like change and sanitize it together. So let's try something like this is Twitter link. We put it over there. Okay, set Twitter link and use date. I'm gonna kick it off with the, the database. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes, do that. Use effect, use effect and uh, come on. Yes, auto completed. There we go. And then we want to find if, um, <laughs> no, not that one. GitHub Copilot, that's insane, right? Um, Twitter link dot index of JavaScript. Like, what do you think about this? Is this a good fix? Let's try it. <coughs> I like this autocomplete. Go with that one. So basically this says if Twitter link uh, over there on the database that we get as user input has, um, has JavaScript in it, it will actually um, set it to, I don't know, set it to something like this, right? Just a hash and that's it. Hopefully I didn't forget to close anything. Looks good. I think it looks good. Let's try it. Did it reload? No idea. Let's see. Did not reload. Did reload. I'll reload it. There we go. So no, we still have it. So this is not the right word again. Oh, did I not save this one? Something here I didn't save. Let's try again. Oh, I'll tell you what we didn't do. So now we need to set the Twitter link instead of the database Twitter link, right? This is real life coding, real life debugging. There we go. Forgot to use the new variable. Okay, now is it loading it fast enough? There we go. Now we did load it fast enough and you can see that on the bottom left, actually I can click on it and just nothing happens because it adds just the hashtag there and that's it. So it looks like we fixed it. Did we fix it? What happens if someone gets a bit, uh, you know, well, tricky and maybe they do something like that. They just, you know, do it as a uppercase kind of string. So now if I do it, uh, did it reload? Let's wait it to reload. There you go. So I reloaded it and now we have the XSS again. So the fix wasn't really that good for us. So let's try something else. Let's try, let's say that we, uh, I mean, we want to catch it. So um, what do you think we should do like that? Should we like do a two lowercase and try it like this? Two, two lowercase, what did that work? Let's do it like this. And as you can see, this is basically the thought process of, of a developer. And what would be great is if they had a tool uh, that would help them on the IDE uh, to basically follow the right uh, APIs. I will, did it get loaded? Let me see. Oh, there you go. So now it did get loaded pretty fast, I think. And looks like we fixed it. Did we? We know it was coming, right? So uh, we fixed the uppercase, we fixed the lowercase, but what else could go in, right? Like anything else, we can strip trim space characters and all those things. We can try all of those, but would it actually work? Would they not? Um, we can try different way of escaping it maybe, but that's maybe a bit tricky. What we haven't tried is, you know, what happens if we add uh, things like control characters there? And that is something that I could actually add a control character over here and escape something like, you know, a slash R, slash N, something like that. And that will actually escape the whole, uh, you know, two lowercase and index of, and everything will be just fine. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I just do slash X, no, not here, over here, I just started off with slash X 19, which is a control character. If I try that one, the whole thing falls apart. Reload it again. There we go. So, as we're learning, doing one thing and the other and the other, these are all trying to mitigate the problem, but there are still some issues, still some issues that we should figure out how to do it. So learning how to do things right is important. Now let me go into something else. Let's say that I actually want to, um, oh, let's avoid this whole thing for a second. So I can try another uh, example. I said it actually wants, uh, well, Libby actually wants to go ahead and do this whole uh, package JSON view 
And well, um, she's not going to go and I mean, I'm not going to go and write a parser that I indent stuff and, you know, highlights. And this is, you could actually have themes and like pretty cool colors, right? So I'm not going to build all of this. I'm going to go outside and find something where I can give it a JSON file, like you know, the package manifest for your NPM package. So we'll go ahead and you know, do this whole really cool highlight syntax thing because I'm also not really a CSS person. So this is, this whole thing is not for me. I'm gonna go over to something like uh, the Sneak Advisor and I'll for, uh, look for, for some packages. Already found something called React JSON Pretty. Um, it's, uh, it's unfortunately it looks like inactive, it's unmaintained or something, but it has something like 40K downloads, which is a lot. So, you know, maybe I'll try and use it. Um, you could try and check if this is popular by version or not. So hopefully, the, uh, I mean, hopefully everyone are on the latest version, which they are. So that's a good thing from security wise, if there's like, this was vulnerable, this was vulnerable, you knew what to, uh, you knew what to upgrade to. Um, it also looks like this is mostly used as a direct package, which makes sense as opposed to like an indirect package. So I'll go ahead and use it. The most popular version indeed has no security fixes. Let's see what's going on. I'm going to go and use this. Um, so I'm going to go into package profile. Yeah, where is it? It is package parser, I'm pretty sure. There we go. So I've imported this as package parser and I've provided it uh, the package manifest, which is basically all of this uh, uh, JSON from the database uh, file that I have here. Let's play around with this one here. So it, it's a simple component, just like some, uh, some, uh, some configuration and, and themes uh, applied by default, that's it. Uh, and I can go ahead and, and what I wanna show you is like, let's try and do XSS from other places. Let's say that name is not now Gibson Explorer. Let's go back here, right? Not Gibson Explorer anymore. That's gonna be again that thing that we saw. Well, let's do. I don't know. Well, let's do. I mean, JavaScript alert will not work there. That's not a link. So, I can try this vector instead. Uh, like alert. Let's see what happens. And changed it, but I mean, no alert. I don't even see an image tag, so that's okay. Um, let's try something else. What I would say is, I don't remember what was here, so I'll just do ABC, but let's say this, you know, if I were thinking how to exploit this, I would say if this package uh, was written by, the, you know, someone, maybe they didn't take uh, a good care enough of sanitizing the data or output encoding it by uh, going into all of uh, uh, the, recor uh, the recursive elements that actually are in within the, uh, the, the, the JSON. So all of the, all of the elements that are kind of like living inside other fields and other fields. So what if I try to put it here? Like maybe this is, uh, this level on the JSON is sanitized, but this one is not, or output encoded would be the best way of doing this. Uh, but looks like it is. So like that, that looks okay. So um, there we go, okay, getting back to normal. Now it looks like this is working and I've you know if, if this is a JSON input from, uh, from an HD, uh, from an NPM package that you get as well, that is not controlled by you. That is controlled by someone else, right? So what if that person gives you, um, you know, gives you a bad package JSON, right? Like I'm gonna go and do something like this and say, hey, my, like you're getting this package JSON, there you go. So package mani manifest, there you go. No, it's, it's not a JSON anymore. Now it's a string. It's a string which I control because I, I can I can define whatever I want in my package JSON and my just, just a tar file and I'll send it to you, right? So if this is the, the input now, let's see what happens. Change the whole meaning of what the package JSON is. But the question is, is the application ready to handle something like that? Doesn't look like it because it looks like it, it tries to render it. You should probably have a uh, put an alert box somewhere there. Uh, on alert, on our alert, probably should have worked. Oh, there we go. So now we, we see that what's happening, right? So now you're using a component, an open source library that may have vulnerabilities in it, even though you were thinking it might be okay, you know, probably, you know, it, well, not probably it's not, but you no, know, you have to like test all of those things. So it's kind of like brings us into the world of you know managing components, learning about all of those things. So here are my takeaways. Uh, let's go back to slides. Yes, there we go. So takeaways for us, right? This is you know avoid all of this you know dangerously inner HTML. Obviously, you do not want to do this. But the fact that you're avoiding it doesn't mean that others are avoiding it uh, as well, like we've seen here. So you should really scan your third-party dependencies if you're doing something like NPM audit. 
you know, that's fine. Uh, it's a great way to, you know, get awareness for security vulnerabilities. But in my case, I found out when I was using React.json pretty in my demo here is that it did not find it. When I was doing npm install, npm audit, nothing was showing up for it. You know, luckily I was using a sneak test and I was able to find it. So, you know, be aware of what you're putting into this. Um, if I have to summarize, right? Be aware of what you're putting into your, uh, um, I would say dependencies in general, like libraries collection or your applications components, be aware of what you're putting there, be able to scan it all the time um, and fix it. And the other thing is of course, be careful of what you put into those href HTML uh, attributes because they are not getting output encoded by default. So thank you, you know, React, uh, as I would say, React responsibly and securely. And uh, if you wanna reach out, I'm Lee Rantal. Thank you and have a nice time. Bye-bye.